Welcome, Igniters. I'm Michelle Cavetto, your host for today. And today we're going to interview Maria Lee Driver. Have you ever thought about coming up with something that really would help people, that helps you? And wanted to know how it become the first? Well, you're in luck. Maria Driver is going to show us so much and more. But first, why don't we learn a little more about Maria Lee Driver? There are a lot of firsts in life. That first step, that first kiss, that first day you get your driver's license. Well, Ms. Marie Lee Driver may have experienced those first, yet she is currently gaining attention for another first. Maria Lee Driver is the first African American to ever own a national pet product line. Entrepreneurship is not new to Marie Driver. In fact, she opened her first business at age 19, a salon that kept her busy earning and learning the importance of business. After two decades, decades of business, Marie created a line of natural and organic hair and skin care products called Aria's O'Shea. The products became so popular that they found their way being sold in Whole Foods market stores. Yet Maria found herself being called to create a new natural organic product line for a different kind of customer, pets. The line is called Fresh Mink and soon to be carried by Chewy, one of the largest pet supplier and distributors. Shortly after, she caught the eye of Herman Moore, a former Detroit Lions and New York Giants NFL wide receiver who became a serial entrepreneur and owner of a very exclusive holding company, Team 84. Soon after, Herman Moore's company added Ms. Marie's company, Fresh Mink, to its holdings, a relationship built on respect and vision. She is a business Businesswoman, an inventor, and the soon to be historical figure, and now a guest on Ignite Your Essence TV talk show. Maria Lee Driver, welcome. Hi, Maria. How are you? I'm doing great, Michelle. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. We are just so excited to talk all about you. And let me make a little clarification in there with our intro. Uh, Herman Moore is your venture partner in Fresh Mink Pets. Now we know it as Fresh Mink Pets because that is the website that you can get there, but you are trademarked as Fresh Mink. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm trademarked, I'm trademarked Fresh Mink Pets. Ah, got mm -hmm. you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. We're going to go in deeper into that product. But before that, we just covered quite a lot about your accomplishments, but those aren't the only accomplishments you had in life, are they? No, then <laughs> in fact, may I just say I think that you are an individual who sees that there's a need or doesn't really see obstacles. There are a lot of people, Maria, that go through life and they say, Wow, I wish I, I could come up with this product because I see the need, or maybe I created something already, and how do I get it inside stores and such? And they stop there. What is what's different about your approach in life? Could you give us a little secret of your sauce and tell us what made you say, yes, I'm going to create these things. They're going to be out there in the market and people are going to like it. Could you share us with us a little bit of that? Well, I, I think back when I was younger, I was always a creator. So doing this was a no brainer, but finding the needs for other people. I always had that passion. You know, there's always a fix to something. As a young girl growing up in Gloucester, Virginia, um, it was country. We always, we, we did things, we took care of ourselves. We had, I lived, my, my uncle had a farm, so therefore things was always there. Like we could go get our eggs or we had chickens. So my mom could bake, she loved baking. So I always saw, someone in my family making things or you know creating or just naturally so when i decided to come up with the product which i really and truly didn't know i was going to come up with the product until later on after i opened my kids salon in philadelphia that it was a need i just wanted to provide a healthy natural pro product for children and that's how i came up with the rizzo shea Wow. So you just found a need and you just fulfilled found it. Need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted everybody to have help, especially the young kids with allergies and a lot of things that people don't even realize that they're allergic to because of things they used when they were younger. And as they get older, your body doesn't tolerate it anymore. 
So with children, I wanted to create something natural. So therefore, when they got older, they wouldn't run into those problems. And that's how I really and truly got into making a Rizzo Shack. And then once I started making a product and I saw that the hair, the kid's hair was absolutely beautiful and it was healthy. And then the parents took the product home and started putting their body. And it's always been a joke about, um, I don't have insurance for that. <laughs> so then they started seeing other problems that they can use for it, for us eczema, psoriasis, lupus patients, cancer patients, itchy skin, anything that dealt with the skin is just excellent. It's a wonderful moisturizer. So I went in to solve one problem and I ended up solving several. You know, that's really interesting. So you wanted to solve a problem that you saw that was happening with people's skin. And I loved how it's clear that you researched quite a lot. There is, it's interesting because a lot of products that you say, for instance, Whole Foods markets, how you got your products in there, mm -hmm everyone expects that it's going to be natural and it's going to help. And your products have been tested and tried and true. So it's it doesn't shock me that you moved ahead and you said, I can replicate something just as safe and pure for pets as well. We'll go on with that a little more, Maria. But I wanted to add, talk a little more about that journey. That journey that started, I would have to say, at 19 years old. Is that correct? With entrepreneurship? Yes. yes. Wow. So yeah. someone made a suggestion and said, you need to open up your salon. You're 19 years old. Had you ever <laughs> run a business before? And tell us about that journey. Did Were you scared? How did you move forward? Well, there again, it was another need. And the need was, um, I've always been an entrepreneur. I always knew what I wanted to do. And I went to my instructor. Um, her name was Vivian Simmons. Well, her name is Vivian Simmons. And um, I just said, you know, I went to a couple of salons, I worked in them and they wasn't doing this and they wasn't doing that. And I said, Miss Simmons, what should I do? She says, you need to open your own salon. You, you see things are not correct. You are a leader. It's going to be hard for you to be there in other people's salons or their spaces. You can't tell them what to do, but as your own boss, <laughs> it was a no brainer. So that's how I ended up opening my salon. Had no clue. Me and my girlfriend laugh all the time about that. My best friend, her name is Aunt Andrea. And we didn't know what we was doing. But what I knew, I could do hair. I knew I was a wonderful hairstylist and the business side will come. And it came, you know, made mistakes along the way, but it came. And the best teacher is to start. And that's my motto, start to finish. Because if you never start anything, how are you going to finish it? That is some of the best advice because that's what holds people back, isn't it? You've seen it all the time. Oh, but they probably say, oh, Miss Maria, I, I have a product that I want to get on and da, 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 da. And, I get and that make, all the time. And they don't start, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> that is really interesting. I loved how you said there are some mistakes, but, you know, it sounds like all those mistakes that you found were learning experiences. Is that how you just built on your business? Okay, don't do that again. Build on. How does that process work? It, it works exactly that way. And what is so ironic, I remember speaking to my sister, um, actually my oldest sister, and I said to her, I think I was about 30. Now, I've been in the business, what, 10 years? And I said, you know, I think I just want to go back to college finish up, take a business course. Um, I had taken some courses um, at James Madison University when I got my teacher certification. But I was like, you know, maybe I should go back and take a course in, in business. And she looked at me and she said, really? You have the best teacher in the world. The experience that you have, no textbook is going to teach you what you have done in the last 10 years. She said, you can take a refresher course, you know, go to workshops and brush up here and there. She says, but you've been doing this for 10 years. And I, I took the advice and I just ran with it. You know, I do workshops, go to conferences and build. So like I said, I never not college. My two daughters, both of them, I have a, a, one daughter's a lawyer. The other one is a social worker. They went to college. That's a beautiful thing. But a lot of people who have ideas, 
it's something that you have to move forward. It's not, okay, I need to do this and I need to do this. Just move forward and let the chips fall where they may. They might not be every place and places as they fall, but the beautiful thing about it is you're trying, you're putting forth the effort. So if it doesn't work the first time, you can polish it up, polish it up, and you can do it again. And that is just so wonderful about life itself. Wow, that is so beautiful. You had the attitude that many people spend a lot of money with mentors and coaches to have saying, that's okay, you just polish it up. That's a resilience that happens early in life. Were there any things that you did where you're trailblazing when you were younger that added to this attitude? This is not natural. Or did this come from your family? Where did it come from? I think it is natural. Um, I had an uncle who had um, 33 acres in, in, in my hometown. And he found that on the property, he had dirt. And he cultured that dirt into a pit. And then he started selling the dirt off his property. And he made, and this in today's time, you know, he probably considered a millionaire because like I said, that was back in the sixties and the seventies. But I remember when I was a little girl, we would see these great big trucks. And I used to say, I asked my father, why do these trucks keep coming back and forth down to um, Uncle Joe's property? He said, oh, they're getting dirt. I never understood until I got older. So the work ethic has always been there. The creativity always been there. I just tapped into it just a little bit. And I just think about Uncle Joe. He did it. He did it. He found something that worked. And once it worked, he ran with it. So running with it means like a rinse and repeat. Once it works, keep on repeating. Keep working. That yes. That's a beautiful story. A lot of times people don't realize that they actually have exa examples so close and near and dear to them like you had with your uncle. And some people have friends. And what they think is that there must be something that's a little more difficult. And that's what I really would like our viewers to see. It's not as difficult when you start, correct? But you got to be okay with, with perhaps making mistakes. Could you give us a little tip as you're developing, let's say, a Rio Rochers? So this is your skincare product. And not, nobody knew it before. And you knew it worked. What did you learn how to get people more interested in your product and essentially get it into Whole Foods market stores? Well, that came from word of mouth. Always remember, you are your best salesman. And I tell people that all the time. You have to sell it. You become an entrepreneur. And this was taught to me at a young age. When someone buys something from you, when someone sees value in what you have, it could be you value it as a dollar, 50 cents, or it could be a hundred dollars. But what is the value? The moment someone buys something from you, you become a business person. So once you're a business person, what do you do? You ask more people. You want to get no's. You know, I was a director for Murray Kay. Do you know how many no's I got before I earned my second, because I had the second car? I got a lot of no's, but it never stopped me from the first car to the second car. So you have to be able to take it on the chin and don't take it personally. And my best advice that I could give to anyone, get the opinions from strangers. Your family and friends love you so much. They will tell you to hype you up. <laughs> they, they will bring you into the fold and they'll see no wrong. Get advice from people you don't know See if they like your product. See if they love your product. See if they will buy your product. And that's when you start. When you know you have something tangible or if not even tangible, coaching, whatever it is, if you can sell it, you're in business. So now the ball is already rolling. What you going to do? That's so beautiful. You were literally talking to so many people. I don't know if you know this, but we have a growing number of viewers right now who are really tapping into the story of your entrepreneurship journey. 
And more importantly, folks, you have to notice that Ms. Maria Lee Driver is a master at she, what she's doing. Everyone who's a master, Maria, at, at what they do, they make it sound so easy. And you say, well, you got to start. But what you're showing, that secret to, your, secret to your sauce, and I know there's a lot more that you can teach us here, so I, I can't wait till we delve into it. I loved how you just pour into people and saying, you just got to do it. And you just have to polish it up and keep it going. This is a beautiful story. And why I feel it's beautiful is because you are the type of entrepreneur that people wish that they could become. You are a big success and you're growing. Now, we talked about fresh mink pets and fresh mink pets is a pet fume. And this is something that's quite unique about you. In fact, we <laughs> shared this in our promotions. You don't have a pet, do you? I <laughs> know. <laughs> Now, but there certainly is a need because, you know, that little, I'm going to tell you a story, Maria. So okay. uh, when, when I got my puppy, I had a, I had a puppy mm -hmm. and I thought, you know, why is it that dogs, even when you bring them from the groomer, they always smell like wet dog. They sound like, they smell like everybody's wet dog. And even though I live in the dry climate, sometimes that happens as well. So I bought Oprah. I saw an Oprah show and she was talking about that ginger skin souffle by, by origins. And so I went to the to Macy's and I got the perfume and the woman says, oh, you're going to love this. And I said, oh, it's actually for my dog. I was going to give it to the groom with the spray on because it's all natural. It was the only thing that I could trust. And I'm like, if Oprah likes it, OK. And yeah, so I gave it to them, the spray. The woman thought I was insane. She thought yeah. it was insane. They had got this, this perfume for humans that was all natural for my dog. But I was like, wow, why should I feel silly about this? And here you are, you created Fresh Mink Pets. Can you explain <laughs> to us why? And you're not even a pet owner, but I'm telling you, you're on to something big. Well, what? <laughs> okay. The product was created because I have a grand dog. My grand dog name is Dior. Love Dior. He's a toy poodle. And um, my daughter, my your youngest daughter, that's a social worker. She has Dior and she takes him to the groomer. I mean, she takes, oh my goodness, care of that dog just like it's a child. But when I will go visit them in Virginia, um, I want to see Dior. And then my oldest daughter, she has Blue, which is, he's a all black lab. He is beautiful too. And I want to play with the with the pets. But the problem is, I don't want to smell like them when I leave. I have other places to go. You know, it's just, I just can't. I just just wanted to be there with them and play with them. Excuse me, live TV. My mic and my <laughs> hair. My hair and my yeah, hair yeah. mic is not working here. Let's see if I can get this in. So while Maria and is moving it's real, on to since take it's care real of here. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. All right there we, there go. we go. So you're so, talking about your ground dog, yes. Right. So I, I just like playing with them, but I have other places to visit and I don't want to smell like them. So I said, what can we do with these dogs? And my youngest daughter said, well, Ma, stop talking about it, be about it. That's a challenge to me. <laughs> so I said, okay. So during the pandemic, we was in the house. What could you do? And before the pandemic, I had already decided that, and it's, this is the craziest thing. 2019, I started um, doing health and wellness conferences. And I introduced that I was going to do this product, Fresh Mink Pets. Now, mind you, when I introduce it, this is the truth. This is it, drum roll. Duh, duh. <laughs> I didn't even have the product. I put the name out there and say, okay, this is coming in 2020. And I hadn't developed anything, but I knew I was going to create it, but I didn't know. So when we had the pandemic in um, 2019 um, and 2020, I decided this is the best time than ever. And that's when I created the product. Made it, gave it to friends, family, had a few celebrity friends, gave it to them. They loved it. And that's how Fresh Meat came about. I love that story. And this is one of the reasons why is because you said, I said it was gonna happen. I didn't have the product, but here's the thing that makes you full of integrity. 
you've you've created products and they're successful. So you're used to completing things. Yes. And I love the fact that you accepted that challenge by your daughter. Well, why don't you do something about it? <laughs> but what's interesting, even more so interesting, is the fact that you're used to accomplishing things. Now, how does that look like in in your life? When, when you say, I'm going to do something, it sounds like people can really take it to the bank. They know that you're going to accomplish it. So it's by no stretch. I just want to get this clear to our viewers. It's by no stretch that you were trying to sell something that didn't exist, but you knew it was going to happen. But it sounds like also you knew what to do with your time. A lot of people freaked out in 2020 saying, home, oh, what am I going to do? Looking at and getting pulled in. And you created something. How did that happen? You said, I have this time. Is that what happens when you have free time? You just go off and create something? When you have, <laughs> well, yes. Um, I'm an author as well. So when I have my downtime, my brain doesn't stop. It just keeps moving. Just like I wrote my first book, um, Detours. Don't give me directions if you don't know where you're going. That came from thoughts and feelings. So I put out that, I'm going to have this product. We didn't know when we was going to go back. Things were going back to normal. I had to do something with my hands. I wanted to create. And that's how I ended up putting it together. And then with the pet fume, I ended up making the shampoo, the conditioner, and the sage. And the story behind the sage, that was already formulated in my mind 10 years ago when I saw this young man walking down the street with some American bullies. And one of the bullies had some skin missing off of off the uh, the back of the, the dog. And I just asked him, what was, what's going on with the dog? And he said, um, you know, I think she got allergies. She just be scratching. And when she scratched, she'd scratch off the hair. And I just asked him to just try a little sample. I had a little sample of an unscented or real shea at that time. And all my products are all natural. So, yeah. Uh, I knew it couldn't hurt, but I wanted to see what it work. And he called me back in three months and said, hey, this worked. Well, at that time, I had just gotten into Whole Foods. I couldn't pick between humans and pets. Ten years ago, if we would be in this space, we would definitely have a different conversation because I was all in with on the human side. So the timing is just right. So when I introduced the sage, I took those ingredients and any all the other natural ingredients, make it pet safe. And that's how I came up with the sage. So everything was already, it's, a, that's what said, people, when they create, think about things that you already did, incorporate what you have. Because I'm telling you, a lot of us already are creators. We already did it. We just never put anything behind it to even put in our minds and say, hey, Let's sell this. Can it can it be is it sellable? Do somebody else want what we have? That's the thought. And a lot of people don't think about that. They don't, they, they they're creators, they love it, but can you sell it? Or is it so dear to your heart that you just want to keep it? I love how you're unpacking this for us, Maria. Thank you. Because this is what you did with your time and creativity you're saying is so important. I think that's where a lot of people get a little flubbed up when they come up with an idea, then they maybe second guess themselves and they say, well, maybe I should do what other people are doing. And you're like, mm -hmm. rely on your creativity. We're going to unpack that a little more, but what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about our platform with the Los Angeles Tribune. And Maria will come right back. The Los Angeles Tribune, folks, is bringing programming just like this so that you can be educated and understand how not only entrepreneurship works, but how you can move forward. And Maria Lee Driver's story is certainly something that you will find valuable as you move forward in your own adventures. But before we move on with that, why don't we learn a little more about the Los Angeles Tribune? Hello and welcome to the Los Angeles Tribune. Since 1886, our name has been a part of the world of journalism.
We've earned a reputation for being a publication that practices integrity, authenticity, and responsibility. For general inquiries, contact today. Thank you on behalf of the Los Angeles Tribune team. And we're back. Hello. And before your break, we were speaking with Maria Lee Driver, and she's so lovingly stayed on the stage, and she's going to be able to also answer questions as we move ahead. What we're talking about is how to make history. And if you notice in Maria Lee Driver's story, she did not set out to make history. She just set out to find a need and see if it was possible and to create amazing products that did no harm to people and now pets with fresh mink pets. Maria, thank you for coming back. <laughs> so we were talking a little more about how creativity really matters in business entrepreneurship and also how it's great to harness that when you have free time. Let's delve in a little deeper with Fresh Mink Pets. Now, you recently were at one of the largest national uh, pet industry and pet product industry conventions called the uh, Pet Zoo in Las Vegas. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Super Zoo. Yeah. Super Zoo. Super All zoo. right. <laughs> so here you are. You had this fantastic product that you know worked for you because you had a need for yourself and you knew other people may have a need. And you're used to natural products. And that's the one thing that pet owners are worried about. They're worried about, well, what do you mean it's natural? Could you speak to the fact as to why it was a no brainer to make sure that these were really safe products for your for the pets? Well, because a lot of natural stuff, or a lot of natural products, you got to be real careful with that as well. Um, like a lot of essential oils, they're not great for the pets. Matter of fact, they do more harm than good. So when I decided to do this, I really had to do my homework. It's just like some foods. You can't give your dogs, they say, grapes. Grapes are really bad for a pet, especially for a dog. You have to know exactly what you want to put in your product that will not only work, but it's safe. And that's where research come in. And even with my Riz O'Shea, I researched that as a former cosmetologist barber instructor, I knew from years of serving, servicing the public what worked on the hair and what didn't. Same thing, but I wanted Dior to smell good, which is my grand dog, but I wanted him to be safe as well. I didn't want my daughter to pick up the phone and say, Mom, what did you do to my dog? <laughs> So I made sure I uh, did my homework. I wanted to really get that clear to all of our viewers because that is why I was so excited about Fresh Mink Pets. You have a huge reputation of taking care of human skin and their hair with your Oreo O'Shea's line. And now with Fresh Mink Pets, it should be no different. You're mass producing this and soon to be available at all uh, distributors. But more importantly, we wanted to point out of the big coup that you created with uh, Chewy, which is one of the largest yes, distributors so out excited. there. <laughs> yes. And they're very picky picky with their pets, their pet products as well. And so this is what makes you so amazing. Another part of making history is the fact that you are an entrepreneur who happens to also be African American. And you thought that's no big deal. But guess yeah. what? People told you it was a big deal. Would you like yeah. to speak to that a little bit? Well, it's, it's just amazing that I tapped into something that I who knew? I mean, when we talked earlier, I, I said to you, who knew that if you walk into a pet co or a pet smart or chewy, is there a national brand that was created by African American? Who would have ever thought that? And we are so such a diversified world that why not? So making history, I didn't set out to make history. I set out to make Dior and other animals because when I come to visit you, I want your animal to be fresh. I love pets, all pets. Now, I'm not too crazy about the reptiles, but I love, <laughs> yes. I love all pets. <laughs> so Maria, that means that you're not going to come out with like the reptile version of oh, fresh no. meat pets. <laughs> oh, no. oh no, 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 
no, no. Thank you I'll for stay with, that. I'll stick with the fur babies. The fur Just babies. The fur babies. The fur babies. <laughs> well, the fur babies are saying thank you, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so why I wanted to bring this up is because it's very, very clear that everyone knows that your products are well-researched to the best of your, of, of your ability with your company. You're a very successful businesswoman in all lines, uh, in your lines with your skincare products, with the shampoo and such. So of course, this translates to the quality of fresh mink pets. So thank you for speaking to that. Now, we didn't want to just focus on that as well, because listening to you, it sounds like you're very savvy when it comes to business and also who you partner with. Could you explain to us what made you think about partnering with uh, with your uh, Team 84? And of course, here we go, Herman Moore, <laughs> in case you guys didn't know with the intro, for those of you see the, the viewership climbing here. Many of you, you probably didn't see the intro video. video. Herman Moore is actually an, a former NFL wide receiver for both the, uh, the Colts and um, the New York Giants and the NFL. And he caught the eye of Maria Driver. Now he has a manufacturing company. As you can see here, it says Merit Manufacturing. And there, he is, there Maria is, look at them, they're just happy. <laughs> And this is how it's, you're making it possible to be able to serve all of the needs on Chewy and also the needs of all the stores that your product is spreading through. This is something that is new to entrepreneurs of understanding how the importance of finding the right manufacturer. Could you explain to this as to why this was important and also how you ended up in Herman Moore's eye line? Well, let's we're going to correct something he is was a wide receiver for the Detroit Lions so but meeting him through other through another connection because he had everything that I needed far as team 84 is a excellent company excellent they start from the beginning they got from A to Z so it was a no-brainer to actually team up with Herman Moore and his team team 84 um he saw in me that I had something, not only did I have something, but as he would say, epic. <laughs> and he just grabbed it, embraced it, and they're running with it. And I really appreciate them. I let them know all the time. I'm constantly talking to them. They're constantly grooming and, and getting me in that space. And it's just a blessing. And I also say to people, they say, well, you know, that person, you have somebody behind you. But remember, I've been doing a real shape for 12 years. I didn't have anybody behind me. And I still sold products. I still did conferences. I still worked. And that's what you have to do. You have to keep moving, regardless if you have a powerhouse behind you. Because when you show people that you have passion for everything that you're doing, because if you don't love what you're doing, you don't have passion for it, there's nothing. And people can sense that. It's just like pets. <laughs> I went, I did a pet expo this past weekend and it was so funny. The pets just gravitated to me, but it was one pet. He snubbed his nose at me and I was like, wow, <laughs> that was shocking, but it's okay. When you have passion, you keep moving. If I was in my feelings, I would have said, oh, Oh, I don't think they like me. No, whatever you have, believe in it and move forward with that. Because I'm telling you, when people see you, they see you have a passion for what you're doing. They will gravitate. And all those things that you're looking for is right there. But you got to start. I love that. Thank you so much. If you believe in it, move forward into it. Yeah, that's right. Because sometimes you're even going to get snubbed by pets. <laughs> I got snubbed by a pet. I, can and you believe it? He just, he turned his dog. I was like, hey, how you doing? He was like, oh, no. Oh, no. I think that's the first snub I've ever gotten. <laughs> In the world. Is and the owner was like, well, she, she's usually nice, but she, she's a no. I was, I was like, oh, my. By a dog. I got snubbed by a dog. 
<laughs> Maria, uh, and thank you, first of all, for correcting about, you know, Herman. And of course, you know, I misspoke everyone, Detroit Lions and yes. New York Giants. Oh, yeah, there'll be a phone call after <laughs> if we didn't do that. So thank you very much. And it sounds like Team 84 is really a fascinating, unique company in the fact that they they really know about manufacturing and made in America. I don't think we talked about that, did we? we well, uh, is that true? Or well, yes, it is. Actually, yes. Okay. I think it's a Sterling, Michigan, is where the manufacturing company is based out of, and Team Eighty Four is in Troy, if I'm not mistaken, Troy, Michigan. So, but he partnered with Merit Manufacturing. So, like I said, he had from the beginning to the end, and it's just an awesome thing. I mean. Matt, uh, he does the materials uh, for branding, bottling, like I said, manufacturing. And I'm just so blessed that this was introduced. You know, he was, his team was introduced to me and they've just taken it to a whole nother level. And by Fresh Meeks being the only pet product out there by African-American, they really and truly um, put a lot of spotlight on it. And I really appreciate that because we love our pets too. And we want people to have what we have. So I created something. So now we can all have something that's by African-American and diversifying it. Yes, because really and truly, this is a need for everyone. It doesn't yeah. matter what race, color, or creed. Exactly. This is the product. And quite frankly, it's all about our fur babies. Mm -hmm. It's about the fur babies. And I want them to smell good. And <laughs> when they smell good, your house smells good, your car smells good, everything smells good. <laughs> there's something that's really important for the, what you're sharing right here and i'd like to kind of unravel this a little more so this product is made in america and that's kind of that's important nowadays because ever since the pandemic supplies have been very difficult and also you find it really important with your products that you make sure that everything is done properly yes naturally, mm -hmm. safe for the pets. I think that is amazing. But what's also interesting, Maria, is that what holds certain entrepreneurs back who do have products that maybe have hit some stores is they're afraid to move forward because they're not sure, well, I can't you know, rent this factory and make and make my whole batch so I can fill all of these units for all these stores that they're asking for orders. But for you, that wasn't a problem. You just set out to find someone and that's how that partnership began. I just want to kind of speak to that a little more about you can find those resources. Is that correct? Yes. I well, because I kept my that's the beautiful thing about my product. It's simple. It's very simple. And the ingredients, because I, everything is made in the United States, it's not hard to find. When you decide to reach out beyond the boundaries of the United States or anything that's not natural and have to be imported, that's when it becomes a product problem. I didn't do that. So, and remember, I told you I started in the household creating this. So all my ingredients are natural and things that I could actually put my hands on. That is important. This is this is why I keep on asking you more about this, Maria, because it's so important for people. And I'm sure we're getting a lot of sighs of relief because a lot of times people can put natural, but they really don't know that somebody is behind that brand of French Rush Pink Pets, who is really ensuring that on the manufacturing level, everything is done properly and safely on the research level. And you have that passion that you're talking about. Fresh Mink Pets, even though you have a grand dog and not pets on your own, <laughs> I you do. love I all got my three grand things, dog. <laughs> right? I think at some point we may end up seeing your, your grand dog somewhere. But, <laughs> <laughs> but what makes this story even more interesting is the fact for you, it's so natural. It's so natural to have this passion and to go forward and move ahead with your business. And this is something that so many people, we've talked about this before in previous episodes about how there are more 
uh, entrepreneurs being born since the pandemic in the United States alone and also around the world. And this is their first time actually taking this their first steps into creating a product. And you talked about passion, Maria. Could you speak to someone about how to connect that passion with creation to create successful lines like you have? When you have something that you want to do, ask yourself as you're doing it, is this something that you want to do on a long term or short term? If you want to do it on a long time term, then therefore that's your niche and you can run with that. If it's something that you just want to do on a short term, then that's a hobby and there's nothing wrong with the hobby. So I ask people if this I mean, I'm not doing fresh meat pets and tomorrow I'm just going to go to sleep and I've decided I'm going to do something else. If you really, and this is when you know you got passion, you don't mind doing it over and over and over and over again or making it better or adding to it. That's when you know this is a passion. If you have something and you pick it up and you're like, ah, uh, I don't want to do that anymore. And you move into stuff that, that product or that project that you was doing, it's not your passion, it's your pastime. So that's what the difference between a hobby and a passion. Yes, wow, okay. <laughs> Viewers, I know you guys are catching this and I could tell with these comments here, people are really eating up what you're having to share. And so <laughs> thank you. Understanding the difference between a hobby and a passion, mm -hmm. because most likely you're going to be successful like Maria, if you actually identify that it's more of a passion that you're reworking. It's so fascinating because I feel like you're giving people a mastermind. And I know you're just sitting there going, well, it's as simple as that. But <laughs> as we know, those just like, well, you're, I don't know if you're watching the Winter Olympics, but you see those ice skaters and the skiers and they make it seem so easy. That's you know? passion. That's that passion, passion, right? Yes. Over and over, <laughs> practice, reworking. Yes. That's how you get there. And it's and it's so beautiful. And you identify that in also entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for sharing for all of those new entrepreneurs, because quite frankly, America needs more examples and the world. This is a worldwide show, Maria. And so I really want to thank you so much for sharing more of this. Now, say, for instance, you met a young entrepreneur or and I mean young at heart. Because there are a lot of entrepreneurs out there who are actually a lot older. They're in their 40s, their 50s, 60s, some are in their 70s. And they're thinking, okay, I have my passion. I have my product. You said I have to sell myself. What does that look like? How did you realize that you had to sell yourself to just get through the threshold, to get your products, say, in Whole Foods markets, to get your products on the Chewy? How, what would you say to them, Maria, how they can do it? First of all, first to start off with, you need to, if you, let's say you want to get into Whole Foods. I want to get into Whole Foods. This is a true story. I'm going to share it right with you today. I tried to get into Whole Foods. It took, I think I, I applied like in January. I didn't get my product into Whole Foods until June. But in between that time, I kept calling and I couldn't get an answer or uh, the person I needed to speak to wasn't there and the disconnect was just horrible. And we did this, we did this song and dance for like four months. And then finally, when I did get in touch with them, they was like, okay, well, this is your date. Well, the date they gave me that day before that afternoon, I was traveling down the street and Lord and behold, someone opened their car door up on the street in Philadelphia and tore the whole side of my van off. Like just, I was in a car accident, make a long story short. And I was hurt. The glass was all over me. I had to, you know, go to the hospital the whole nine. And of course they gave me, you know, pain medicine. But I knew I had this meeting at one o'clock the next day with Whole Foods. Now, if my heart wasn't in it, I would say, let me reschedule. But I had waited so long to see if, because my thing is I need to see. And that's how fresh meat came about. I took it to Vegas because I needed to see. So when one o'clock came, I was in pain. 
I didn't take the medicine because I wanted to make sure I had clarity of what they were saying to me. Can I get my product in Whole Foods? It was so hilarious. Once everything was said and done, and I talked to the young man, the buyer that actually got me in the first Whole Foods, his name, um, Bill, he got me in and he, he said to me, he said, you know, I noticed something was different about you that day. I was in so much pain, but I had to hear this man say, we want your product in Whole Foods. I had been in a car accident at six o'clock that evening, the, the latter evening, and I made sure I made it to that appointment. That's how important it was to me. So if you have that same passion and that same drive to make sure that it takes the next step, regardless of whatever you have to do, then you know this is what you want to do. And this is your business. That's dear to your heart. That's why I say it's a difference between a hobby and passion. A hobby is like, oh, you know what? I can reschedule that fun another time. This wasn't a hobby for me. This is my entrepreneurship kicking in, my passion, my dream. And this is something that I didn't want, but this was the desire of my heart to be in Whole Foods. And I made it happen. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing this. Because a lot of times people will say, oh, I got a car accident. Oh, maybe that's a sign I should just reschedule because it's scary. You've wanted that. You wanted it for you wanted that meeting for four months, four months. You did yep. not give up. And a lot of times it's like you're just digging and digging for treasure and you think, ah, oh, maybe I'm not going to get there. But you had to see it through. And you that's the difference you said between a passion and a hobby. If it were a hobby, you'd reschedule. And who knows, we may not even be talking about this today. But it is so important. And I wanted to make sure that our viewers got this because a lot of people really do ask these questions of themselves as well. But they're, they may not be asking the right questions. And so thank you for bringing that up, Maria. Now, you are an award-winning entrepreneur. And I wanted to, be, to give credence to this. You didn't set out to be an award-winning entrepreneur, did you? You won a, a runner-up for the Madam C.J. Walker Award, which is actually a very big deal, folks. There was that beautiful award. And the reason being is because Madam C.J. Walker is one of the first female successful million multi-millionaire um, millionaire entrepreneurs who happens to also be African-American. But more importantly, it was about the entrepreneurship. And yet here you got that award. It seems like when you do things that you're passionate about, they, they have results, but you don't stop. Do you remember a uh, well, I know you weren't around. I wasn't. But learning about <laughs> Babe Ruth, you know, the, the, ba the big Bambino, Babe Ruth, what he would do, Maria, and you probably know this, is that he would really brazenly stick his bat out into the field like he's going to hit a home run. Do you feel that when you have this passion for something? You go, hey, I am going to have a product that's going to be a pet fume for pets. And it's going to be safe, just like all my other products. It's going to be organic, just like all my other products. And it's going to help people, just like my other products and furry people and furry things. Um, did you do that? Do you ever feel like this is what I'm going to do and you're going to hit that home run? Is that what it feels like? What does it feel like when you make that decision? I make the decision not for the home run. I make the decision because I want to solve a problem. And if it makes a home run, that's awesome. But I didn't, I don't set out to make a home run. It just so happened that whatever I create, it's a need. And a difference between a need and a want makes another thing. That's, that's another world of difference. If you, I was, talking to um, when I first made a Rizzo Shea and I was having a discussion with my doctor that actually write prescriptions for a Rizzo Shea. His name is Dr. John Cruz out of Philadelphia. And he said, Maria, the moment you have something that someone has a need for, not a want, but a need, that's when you change it. You change their mindset. So when I made Fresh Mink, I made fresh mink because I wanted the odorizer for the pet because I wanted people to realize that your dog doesn't have to stink. And 
or smell bad. And I met a lot of people at the pet at the pets at the super zoo and at the pet ex, the expo that I did this past weekend. And they said they love their pets, but they don't like their pets thinking. So I try to create things that it's a need, not so much of a want, because we we don't want dry hands. So you give me some lotion and I put the lotion on and my hands on dry. But what happens in 30 minutes, an hour, you got to get some more lotion. When I created a Rizzo Shea, I want something that you could put on your skin and last all day. And that's the difference between what I created and what somebody else created. I don't want a moment creation. I want a long lasting creation. And the same thing with fresh mink. I created a product that you just don't spray on a dog and the dog smells good or a cat. What happens is when you spread on the animal, not only does it last for a few days, some people say it lasts a week or longer, but the animal is fresh. And that's why we came with fresh mink. It has nothing to do with mink, the pet. Fresh, the mink is the coat, the coat of the animal. That is beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. It really does speak to you as a person. And the reason why we call this show Ignite Your Essence is because we really want to delve in deep into the hearts and minds of our guests, Maria. And what you're saying is something very, very important. And you're very successful about it. And I know Fresh Mink Pet is going to be even more successful. My first interview was Dame was with Dame Doria Cordova. And she has, she's on, you know, billionaires have her on speed dial. She's met some of the most incredible world leaders helping people. And she is the most heart centered. And you know, Maria, what she said, she said, well, if people want to make a lot of money, they just have to solve one of the world's problems. And you're saying you didn't think of the home run. You thought about solutions, how to find that solution. I have a, a vet friend who says that a lot of people uh, really want their pets to be accepted by everyone. And there's some people who don't think that they're uh, pe you know, dog people, cat people. And it really does help with, in my, my opinion, breaking the ice with these individuals when they come over your house or around your pets is to have them smell good. So I can see the benefit <laughs> of your product, which is really extraordinary. But you are are the whole package. You are the whole package of heart-centered individual who wants to solve, uh, so find solutions for things. And that is what the success is. You, all of you viewers out there, it is amazing. People are really, I know that they're just interested in this. Now, I do have another question for you, and then we'll move on to what we call the big question. <laughs> So you're talking about passion. You're talking about making sure that, you know, find a solution for people who are entrepreneurs or are coming out to try to figure out if they can have a product that's nationally accepted like you. What about the people around you? Do you surround yourself with people that are equally successful or do you surround yourself with people that are just positive? What keeps you going when it comes to involving yourself with people when you have a lot to do in your life, especially in business? I surround myself with people with energy. I have to have energy. I don't like negativity. I love people who have the drive to get up in the morning and make a difference whether it's if you're doing it outside inside you're going to work whatever that difference is i'm an energy person anybody will tell you I, i'm like this all the time i mean if you ever see me quiet i'm thinking and if i get real real quiet then it's real real serious but majority of the time this is it i am a high energy person and the people that's around me accept my energy so you if you want to be a millionaire, you need to hang out with millionaires. And I'm telling you, it gravitates. And I know millionaires as well as I know people that's not a millionaire or people who started out just like me. But I need the energy because if you got the energy, we can ignite. Pun taken. <laughs> 
<laughs> I love it. But it's true. It's so true. You can ignite. And may I add, you literally are igniting. I don't know if you see the comments coming across, but our viewers are really finding you inspirational. We have Eniko uh, uh, Anyo Biro Nelson who said, You are so expiring. And of Aww. course, uh, Shimiko, Shimiko Cole says that you are high energy yourself. So <laughs> definitely, people are catching your vibe. And I think it's so important important, Maria, that people understand that you're not just out there to sell things. You're here no. to find solutions. Yes. You are passionate about it. And I want to add, you were like, you're so zen about your, your abilities. I know you said you're full of energy, <laughs> but you have this calm that I see in a lot of successful entrepreneurs that really are people who are passionate about what they do. It's something that is in that essence and you've really ignited us. And may I add that we'll probably see you also somewhere in the pages of our sister uh, project, which is Leaders in Transformation, Lit Magazine, Global, yes, Worldwide. Yes. <laughs> and I am so pleased because of the fact that there are so many high energy, successful and up and coming Leaders in Transformation who definitely will all follow find your story inspirational as well as your products safe. That's what we want, especially with our pets. So thank you so much. Now, before we move on though, Maria, I'd like to ask you the big question that we ask all of our guests. And that is, how do we make the world work for 100% of humanity in the shortest possible time through spontaneous cooperation without ecological damage or disadvantage to anyone? That's by R. Buckminster Fuller. What say you about that? Oh, well, I'm a peace person. So the disadvantages to me in this lifetime is we have to find peace because now we're talking about bringing everything together. How can we not, we looked at the disadvantage, but other than taking care of the environment, we have to become as one. And I don't know anybody that doesn't think that way other than as, as, as the song would say, a few haters. But the biggest thing is we, I feel that our advantage as coming together and in a peaceful manner will have that whole part of the disadvantage you can take that away. You can take that disadvantage away and make it an advantage instead of being a disadvantage. Because we, we got to do that for the environment. We have to say, what are we going to do to make this a safer place? It has to be. Wow. Yes and yes and yes. Coming together. I love the way you say that. And then you switch it. Your mindset is of abundance, isn't it? Do you, you believe that there's enough for everyone? Everyone. 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 Because they're working together. So when you're moving forward with your business of Fresh Mink Pets, and we know it's already a success and everybody's eager to make sure that we get your products, you are actually making sure that you people know that you're not the only one that can do this. Is that correct? No. There's no, enough for everybody everyone. can do it. Everybody. No, no, anybody can do it. That is, I created a product because like I said, it was a need. Anybody could do what I did. The difference is, it's just that I just happened to realize that we weren't in that space. People doing it every day. Wow just a need. So there you have it, folks. This is, in my opinion, the anatomy of a successful entrepreneur who didn't think about the home run, who didn't think about making history, and yet she is used to constantly accomplishing things. You have so many home runs in your life, Maria, and I, I wish we had a little more time to talk about this because I find you so inspirational. But also, we cannot have motivation to get going without seeing inspirations like you. So I want to thank you so much for coming so heart-centered, for coming with so much integrity and to coming as plain as possible to show people, Maria, that it is possible to make history by just 
following your passion and moving forward on it. Is yeah. that correct? What is, is your quote again? I want to hear that quote of yours. <laughs> you about... have to start to finish. Yes. Could you speak <laughs> you... a little more about this? Because I really want our viewers to know this. <laughs> you have to start to finish. Even if you start something and it doesn't look like anything, but your vision, put your vision to work and let it grow. Watch it grow. It's, it's no different than watching a plant. I love plants. I have plants. I get such a kick out of watching the little baby plant to start from nothing but a seed. And it just start growing and growing and growing. That's the same thing with creativity. It might not look like nothing in the beginning, but just keep feeding it and, and, and watering it and giving it all the love and care and your vision will blossom. I promise you, your vision will blossom. And the bottom line is what it looks like to you, not to nobody else, but what it looked like to you. And if it work according to the way you want it to work, that's yours. And nobody can take that away from you. Thank you so much. You are like just a warm hug. <laughs> I know you, you don't do it, but I know you don't do any business mentoring, but I'm telling you, you would have people stacked up, lined up, listening to what you have because they know it is legitimate. And Michelle A. Wilson says, feed and water your vision. It will blossom. We're now absorbing what you're sharing and we want to amplify this. I'm so excited and so Thank enthusiastic you. with everything everything that you shared with us on Ignite Your Essence. And if you guys haven't checked it out yet, look at the ticker below. Go to Fresh Mink Pets. And, you know, one thing that you want to remember is as we bring these guests, you know their quality. And you could tell just by yeah. how Maria Lee Driver is speaking that she understands that whole process. But you got to start to be finished. And I love yeah. that. Thank you so much, Maria. Don't go away because I want to have you have a closing comment here. So folks, I wanted to thank you for listening to this. We're going to bring up Maria in a, in a minute, but I also wanted to remind you that if you enjoy programming like this, if you keep on enjoying your all the guests we're having, and thank you so much for giving us feedback and, and telling us who else you'd like to see, make sure you stay in contact with us. And while you're at it, make sure that you also follow the Los Angeles Tribune and their social media on Facebook as well as YouTube so that you can make comments and questions for all of our guests. And also, don't forget, ignite your essence. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Many of you are viewing on LinkedIn as well. Hello, LinkedIn, on both the Los Angeles Tribune and streaming also through Ignite Your Essence. And please make sure that you follow us on the credits because as we mentioned before, Ms. Le Maria Lee Driver will be also in already the acclaimed Lit Magazine. That's Leaders in Transformation Worldwide. And you'll see an ad there as you follow the credits of our amazing team here. And for, on behalf of myself, I want to make sure that you understand that this is a team effort, folks. And as you saw with Maria Lee Driver, you have to surround yourself with positivity and people who are just like either who you want to be like or at the high vibration that you want. So I'm so happy that you're here. And I want to remind you to always find reasons to smile. And Maria, Maria, what is your final message to everyone that's viewing? I just want you to, when you build your team, let them know how much you appreciate them and how much time they take out with you. It's dedicated to you because they believe in what you're doing. So when you decide to walk on this journey of, I want to be successful in whatever I'm doing, you can't do it by yourself. You're going to have to build that team, but make sure you embrace the team just like I have. Um, like I said, thank you for having, um, I thank Team 84 all the time because I appreciate them because now I have a, a bigger team, but I embrace my team. So if you get to the point where you can go out there and do your thing, have yourself a team because I'm telling you, there's no I in team and you're going to need them because that's what's going to bring you your success to the full circle. 
spoken from the master. Well, thank you so much, Maria. And with that, we're going to end our show. Thank you for coming to Ignite Your Essence. And I want to wish you a wonderful, wonderful day and morning for those of you who are watching in other parts <laughs> of the world. Thank you. I'll see you later, Maria. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you.